Hi, welcome to Logic 8 Explained. In these videos, I'm going to describe all of the basic functions of logic in order to help get you up and running as quickly and effortlessly as possible. I'll cover everything from setting up your system to the final mix, and all in a fun, musical, and creative way. Whenever possible, I'll use real-world musical examples to illustrate logic's basic functionality. To begin with, let's ask the question, what exactly does logic do? What can we use it for? Well, you can use it for a lot of things. You can record MIDI information via your external sound modules. So it's a great way of sequencing and managing and editing data pertaining to external sound modules. You can create, arrange, and edit MIDI arrangements. You can print out scores and notation, lead sheets. You can record live audio with Logic, that is instruments or vocals, be they electronic instruments or acoustic instruments, but you can record live audio. You can use Logic's or third parties soft synths, that are some built in with Logic that are bundled are the EVP88, the, the organ, the EVB3, clavinet, the EVD6, the soft sampler, the EXS24, etc, etc. Um, you can edit pre-recorded audio, you can, that is you can import, let's say, dialogue or music from other sources and edit it within Logic. But the way Logic works is it works with projects, and you can load either projects or channel strips from projects that are started in GarageBand, or you can start your own projects from scratch in Logic. Another thing you can do with Logic is you can mix MIDI and audio tracks together using effects processing and plugins that are built into Logic as well as third-party ones. And then finally, you can bounce down and your final mixes to two-track stereo mixes to burn onto a CD. So Logic allows you to do all these things and it allows you to work and edit in real time. What that means is as the song or, or the content is playing, you can make changes to it as it's happening and hear them right away without having to stop and wait and process files. And lastly, the other thing you can use Logic for is you can use loop libraries, such as Apple Loops or Rex files. You can use those as additional content to use in the creation of your audio or musical production or content that you're working on. So to get started, it's important to understand that working in Logic is all about being organized into projects. Okay, Logic, the basic file format is referred to as a project file, and project files reside in project folders. So let's take a look at what all this means and how it all works. Right now I have an untitled project open. All right, I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna open a new one and close this one and show you how it works from scratch. I'm gonna go under the file menu to new. It's prompting me and asking me if I wanna save the one that I'm in now. I'm gonna close it and, and not save it. There was nothing to save. So you're prompted with this dialog box now that appears when you invoke the new menu or when you're launching Logic at the beginning. You have a collection of templates that ship with Logic they're set up for various tasks. Uh, this is for exploring guitar processing, various of, this, of the electronic instruments, different types of music where they just have some preset instruments and effects lined up and ready to use as a starting point. But the interesting part is when you get into your own templates, you're going to want to set up your own kind of auto loader or basic template that you're going to want to start from when you're starting your projects. So I'm going to go to the My Templates folder. We'll look in another video as, as to where this is stored on the hard drive. But for now, suffice to say that it can be accessed in this new menu in this left-hand column. I have a couple of auto loads of my own that I've started now. I'm going to go to the one called Logic 8 Groovebox Auto Load. You're going to see that it's prompting me to save it as a project folder. Okay. So the important thing to understand at this point is when you save a project folder, you have the option to include various assets to use the new language that Logic 8 uses. They, they refer to these as assets, um, external audio files that you're going to use in this project, EXS24 instruments, ultra beat samples, space designer, impulse responses. Don't worry if you don't know what all of these things are right now. We're going to get to them throughout the series. But for now, the important thing to understand is that you're prompted when you start a new project to immediately name and save it into a project folder, which is a good thing to do. It's a nice way to keep all your files organized and, and complete and together in one place. So I'm going to just go to my desktop for now, and I'll call this uh, intro. I'm going to leave the default assets here to include just the audio files. I'm going to save it. And now we'll see that intro is in the title bar. We're looking at the main arrange window, which is the, the main window you'll probably do most of your basic work in, in Logic. So we've successfully now created a new project based on a template and saved it into its own project folder. If I just hide this for a moment, I'll drag the project folder into view here, and you'll see that it's created a folder called intro. And in it, we have the actual project file, 
and the audio files folder so that it can contain the assets that we've asked it to save for us, audio files. Go back to the Logic song. And there we are. So that's the basic fundamental idea of how Logic works with project files and project folders. That's it for now. Stay tuned. And in the next video, we're going to look at the building blocks that you work with in Logic, regions and audio files.